Hello and welcome to Traditional Painting the Digital Way. This is where I use digital painting apps to teach traditional painting techniques. This is part three of my Apples in a Hat series and in this video we're going to be working on the apples and a little bit on the hat. If you want to follow along with traditional materials check out part one in this series where I have a list of all the canvas and the brushes and the paint that I use. The application that we're going to be using is Corel Painter 2019 for Windows. And I'm going to go ahead and just start by working on the apples a little bit here in the grass. And I just want to put a little bit of a highlight on the edges of them. And this is just an intermediate stage. This is not a final stage or anything. But we want to put kind of a, a lighter orangish color for the apples. And if you're following along traditionally, you would probably use cadmium red light and mix a little bit of cadmium orange and some white acrylic gesso with it. And that will give it sort of a really light peach color. And here I'm just kind of smudging them in on the, the edges of the apples. And you can use the Just Add Water number 2 brush, which works really well. And then I want to go ahead and use the same color for the highlight on some of the apples that are in the hat as well. And you just kind of want to put it where you can see a highlight. And now this won't be the final highlight. This is just sort of an intermediate highlight for the apples. And you want to just go ahead and kind of smudge it in. And if you're following along traditionally, you can use what is called a dry brush technique where you don't put a lot of paint on your brush and then you take your finger or a paper towel and you just kind of smudge it in and just really soften the edges. And here I'm just working a little bit on the shape of the hat brim and you want to use sort of a yellow ochre color, maybe throw in a little bit of some burnt umber just to darken it and you just kind of want to get the shape of the hat. We're not looking for any final detail right now. We just kind of want to work on getting the brim the way you want it to look and the way it looks around the apples and so I'm just kind of leaving uh, light and dark places where the sunlight will be shining through the grass and around the flowers and those will be the lighter places on the hat brim and then the shadows of the grass and the flowers will be the darker places. So I'm just kind of getting some intermediate shapes going for the hat. And then here I want to go ahead and work on this apple and I want to go ahead and add the dark areas here and also a little bit of the reflected highlight and the reflected highlight can be used, can be uh, added with purple or blue and if you're following along traditionally you can use ultramarine blue or dioxazine purple and just kind of blend it in really well and we want just kind of a really smooth look right now. Right now we're just interested in adding different layers of color to get the three-dimensional look of the apple. And so what you want to do for the apple is just add patches of dark reds and light reds. Where the light is hitting it, you'll add the lightest reds. And then for the shadows, you'll add darker reds. And if you're following along with your acrylics or oils, probably alizarin crimson mixed with some Grumbacher red or cadmium red light will work well for a shadow color. And here I'm just working again on some more reflected highlights in the middle apple. And I want to make sure that I blend them in really well and don't have any sharp edges because we want these to all be really smooth to show the apple skin. And also some apples will have touches of greenish yellow in them. And so if you're following along traditionally, you can add cadmium yellow light or thala yellow green and also blend those in with the red. And as you blend them in, it, you should kind of get almost a orange look maybe. 
you don't want to kill all of your green color you want to to keep that showing a little bit and here I actually added too much and lost my green color on that apple so later on I had to go back and add more to it but here I'm just trying to work on the shape of this apple and you want to look at your apples individually because some of them are rounder than others some of them are more oval some of them are lumpier looking so you kind of want to give each apple a little bit of an individual look and this apple has a lot of yellow and green looking in it and it also has a very streaky pattern on the skin so you want to try to get that to make it a unique looking apple as well and then I'm adding a little bit more of the reflected highlight here on the um, other apple here and reflected highlight usually is just the object is catching a little bit of a highlight from light bouncing off something else so it's in the shadowed part usually of an object and it will catch a little bit of a highlight say bouncing off the hat brim there or maybe the other apples and so these highlights are usually cooler they're usually bluish color or purple color because they're actually in the shadows but they're still a sort of a highlight they're just not a direct um, sunlight highlight or from uh, your light source they're not from a direct light source they're a secondary light source I guess you would call it anyway it's light that bounces off another object and shines on your apples and then here I'm just kind of working and smoothing those highlights in and some of them may be a little bit lighter in color than the other ones and then I wanted to work a little bit on the apples in the grass there just there you're not going to see all of the apples in the grass you just are going to see the edges poking out of the grass but you're going to get the highlight because the sun is actually shining on them so you want to kind of make the edges smooth and and just get the the texture of an apple and I'm working on the hat brim a little bit and adding some of the highlight color and you can make this if you're following along traditionally with yellow ochre and add white acrylic gesso and we want kind of a dry brush look here where you can see the the bristles of the brush and you probably could use your number six flat for this or your filbert brush if you're following along traditionally and I like to use the real long bristles in the acrylic category for Corel painter brushes and so here I'm just kind of adding different <clears throat> colors of brown here you might add a little bit of some burnt umber with a lot of white in it if you're following along traditionally you want a, a light tan color but it's still going to be sort of a shadowed color um, because that's where the brim turns away from the sun there and you want to blend them together and try to make a smooth blend and I'm using um, diffuse blur works really well and it's actually my favorite blending brush but um, real water number two will work uh, well for um, a blending brush too and sometimes grainy water will work it just depends on exactly how you want the texture so I'm working again on this apple and I turned off the um, top layer which had my sketch in it so that I can see what I've got going now but I still have that sketch just in case I lose my place and uh, get things too big or out of place and it's really good to just keep your sketch layer make sure that it's on a separate layer and you can turn it off if you want to but it's good to keep it because you want to be able to see how things are coming along and if you've gotten things out of place or something and if you're following along traditionally one thing you can do is um, use tracing paper and then you can put it back over the top and see if it's if your painting has gotten too far out of the original sketch and then you can kind of go back and fix that 
And here I'm just working on trying to blend in some more highlights. Now these still won't be the final highlights on the apple, but we're getting closer to sort of an idea of where they will be. And you, you just want to smooth the edges out and make sure that they don't uh, look like lines there because you still want smooth edges, but you want this apple to have different variations of red and different colors in it. You don't want just one solid red color because when you do that, it makes it look flat. But if you add all these different darker reds, like the alizarin crimson color or the cadmium red light, all these different colors of red, then that will give a three-dimensional look to your apple and make it look like it's an actual form there that's not just a cutout. And then here I'm just kind of looking through the, the brushes, uh, controls here, trying to get the bristles a little bit more spread out. And you can, as you can see, you can hover your mouse control over each, um, contr uh, each um, control in the, the brushes there, and it will tell you what they are. So I, I really like that because it gives you the tool tips there. And, and so then you can kind of tell what you need to play around with and you just kind of um, see what it does. Just change change one thing at a time. See if it makes the brush more like what you want and you can save these also under um, a different name. If you really create a, a different brush and you really like it, you can go ahead and save it under a different name and you'll have that brush. And here I'm just kind of going through the blenders again and I like I like the Just Add Water too, so I um, picked that one. It, it makes a pretty good blend here. Again, I'm blending in all the different colors, smoothing the edges of where the colors change. And you can do this with a finger or a paper towel or even a, just a dry brush if you're following along traditionally with acrylics or oils. And you just want to kind of give that mottled look to the, the apples. And that just helps make it three-dimensional. And so I'm just smoothing out here, but not killing all the different colors. And <clears throat> I'm working on the edges of the apples. And different apples are going to look different. Like I said, some will be rounder. and Some of them will be more oval and lumpier looking. So we just want to go ahead and sort of give each apple its individual shape here. And that's where your photo reference comes in, and that helps a lot. And you can get good photo references of apples at pixabay.com, which is what I did here. Or you can buy yourself some apples at the grocery store and polish them up and take pictures of them and put them in different buckets and just whatever you want to do. I've done that too in the past. So apples are a really good subject to practice on and they're also very pretty I think and here I'm just adding a little bit of orange on the edge because in the photo reference you can see that there's light hitting the edge of that apple and so I'm trying to kind of catch that transparent look that the Sun is giving the apple and I'm using a very light red almost orange color there and if you're following along traditionally you can use cadmium red light and cadmium orange and throw in a little bit of white and that should give you that orangey red look there. And here I'm just kind of adding a little bit more to the edges around the major highlights here and I wanted kind of a pinkish color but not really that pink. So I am trying to really blend that in with the diffuse blender and that that did help a lot and it, it made it add pretty good color to the apple. I kind of just really blended it in very big right there. So this is the end of part three of Apples in a Hat. And in part four, we're going to be working more on the individual apples and just trying to get more refinements on the apples. So if you're interested, hit that subscribe button and Thanks everybody for watching. Thank you so much for your support. If you have any questions, just leave them in the comments down below 
and I will catch you later.